So my today's talk is design strategy for startups. So I'm not going to teach how you should design strategy for startups. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what are the core principles you should follow when you have an early stage startup or even a one year old startup. So let's start with my introduction first. I've been designing uh, multiple applications, websites, variables, and whatnot. I've been in a lot of technologies, and I work with various companies like Snapdeal, Carvale, India Today, Radio One, and I'm consulted them too. So uh, that's the reason I'm here. I'm going to share a lot of experiences of mine, and uh, I've seen a lot of their growth, starting from angel to seed to series to acquisitions. <coughs> My today's focus is going to be on three core principles or pillars, I would say. That's focus, speed, and innovation. It could be more, you know, but let's stick to these three because early stage startups needs these three things to be right. So the common mistake what we do in a startup, we don't invest in design. And that's what is going to happen if we don't invest in design. I'm kidding, guys, but it's going to be more dangerous than this. The reason is, you know, when you don't invest in design, you don't build really great experiences in the initial stage. You're going to lose a lot of customers, giving them poor experiences. So this is the common first mistake. And second would be uh, choosing a right skill set of a designer in a startup. I've seen uh, UX designer is a hot keyword, and people want to hire UX designers. But as being a product owner or a co-founder, you have to make sure you hire a right designer. What does it mean exactly? So make a sheet for six months, three months, or a year-long uh, sheet, and put down your task. For example, Facebook marketing, banner advertisements, redesigning websites, redesigning applications, designing something. And then you will figure out which designer will suit for you the best and hire that designer instead of hiring a wrong designer. So the third mistake what I've seen is you know, we all are busy in designing, busy in developing our uh, products, and we don't test it. You know? And uh, in, especially in startup, it's very really difficult to hire a lot of uh, people. You know? And testing is something which we don't look at it. Uh, what we say is, you know, let's deliver the product first, and then we will release it again. But that's not, not a great idea, you know. So uh, as a designer, the way I test designs is, you know, I, I put my designs in the mobile and go out in the real world and see how does my design looks, how does the color looks. Then I change it. So let's talk about a few challenges, you know. Uh, in startup, there are a lot of challenges. We're not satisfied with the design quality. We're not able to find the right resource. And there could be an enormous points, you know. So how do we overcome with these challenges? As I told you, there are three core principles and three pillars which we're going to focus on. First is focus. Multitasking is really bad, you know. Uh, doing 10 different things might end, might end up with doing nothing, you know, frankly. So having focus is very, very important in startup because we are bombarded with ideas. And we have so many things to do, but at the end of the day, we have a certain amount of time to do it. So how do we focus exactly? So make a short and long-term goal. I'm talking in terms of design. Make a short-term and a long-term goal. When you design something for your product, if you have three features or five features for say, and you know the product map, uh, a founder or a product owner will have it, you know, and those five features will evolve into 10 features in the future. So make sure you have that thing in mind and design something for tomorrow. Detailing. Let's focus on detailing, guys, you know, including me, you know, I, I'm, I'm also a designer, you know, and I don't focus on detailing. Spelling mistakes, alignments, and I mean, could be anything, any number of things, very small things, you know. So before we deliver design or we show design to someone, let's focus on smaller things. Let's put on your design in the Photoshop file or any JPEG file, sit and check for five minutes and 10 minutes and then share it with anyone. As a designer, we, what we do is, you know, our focus is to design the best product, but we don't understand the value which we are giving it to the users or to the business. We have to think from a business point of view also. We as a designer, we have to think like we are businessmen. We have to be aligned with our business strategy. Let me share an example with you. If I, may, if I own an e-commerce company and my core 
growth is to, I mean, core thing is to grow fast with conversions and your designer is working on beautiful design, does, doesn't make any sense. Make sure your designer and founder or a product owner knows everything, what do you exactly need. So as a designer, I would like to work on conversion rather than making it beautiful. Next is content. We speak in different languages. I speak in Hindi, Bengali, you speak in Malayalam, you speak in Kannada, right? So that's how the product is to speak with your customer. The customer is going to speak with your product. So know your customer right. Who is the customer? What is the demographic of the customer? What's the age exactly? And how, how do they behave? Once you know who is your customer and who are they, from which class they are, then you can talk in that language. I've seen a lot of products, the 4.0 pages, too cool in terms of language, but as soon as you go to the home page, it's very different. So make sure from home page till the error page, your language is either casual, either it's too formal or whatever you want to put it. So this is a small example of my project, you know, which I've done a couple of years back with one of my friends. Uh, so I have used a different kind of content strategy. So this was launched in, as an MVP in Delhi. And we have few keywords inherited in us. How do we talk? For example, we talk Kirana. We talk Sabji. Okay? But when it comes to dairy, we talk in, we, we say, let's go to the dairy. Right? So I've chosen English and Hindi both combination in this project, and it worked really well. So principles. So there are a lot of principles in design which you have to follow. And unfortunately, we don't follow because of lack of time and lack of resources and whatnot. So there are a lot of principles available for mobile applications, at least. So uh, Apple and Android has worked on building these guidelines. Make sure you be as native as possible and uh, go through it and make sure your application is aligning with these principles. because. If you align with these principles of Android and Apple, the chances of getting ranked in the app stores may be higher. Speed. Speed is everything in startup. We have less time in startup. We want to grow fast. We want to go for the next round of funding. But for that, we need to design the product fast. But how do we design it? When we start designing the product, the quality, I mean, if, if we go very fast, the quality goes down. But there are a couple of methods, if we can follow carefully, we can achieve speed as well as we can achieve quality too. Invest, invest in process and guidelines. UX is a vast field, starting from research to uh, delivery of the product, including testing. We don't follow that. It's a one-time process for a product company because at the end of the day, your users are going to be remain same. So I would request you to invest in time, invest some time, some of your time, in the initial phase where you know your users better than anyone else. Sorry. Yeah, metaphors. When you initially design, choose a metaphor. What is a metaphor? Let me explain you exactly what it is. So any kind of an object or any kind of a material we can get inspired from and we can use that in our product language. Let me give a small example, like Vespa. Vespa is, by, is being inspired by a metaphor called honeybee. You see the shape of a honeybee, it's in one structure. Same, Vespa has done the same thing. Vespa's entire body language, body shape is in one structure. The way honeybee sounds, your Vespa scooter will sound same like that. So these are the inspiration Vespa got from honeybee. And something like that, you can get your inspiration. Your inspiration could be anything. Uh, maybe a television, maybe speed, or could be anything, you know. But make sure you have the metaphor for consistent styling or consistent uh, progress of your product. Visual guideline. In the US, it's been very famous, I mean, in the Western countries. But nowadays, we designers are adopting this visual design guidelines, you know. Uh, it's been very effective uh, for development team and for, for other teams also. Uh, because at the end of the day, being a product manager, I don't have to go and tell what to do exactly, what not to do. But let's create advanced visual guidelines. What does it mean exactly? So when you create a visual guideline, make sure the same guideline has been created by your CSS team. 
So what happens is, you know, uh, when developers are coding your design, you as a designer can tell that which class or which ID you're going to choose. So the time has been decreased in terms of developing the product. Libraries, this is going to be a little technical, only designers can understand this, but let me put it on a very simpler language. Uh, when we create a product design, we have a lot of elements, which we can save it in a library, and which you can reu reuse in our various pages and various design. So this saves a lot of time for a designer, and hence we can deliver fast. Plugins and tools. You wish to use your own favorite tools, you know, definitely, but there are a lot of new tools came in the market, Envision Craft, Origami, and Adobe XT. So the best thing about Origami, I'm going to tell, you know, uh, when we do interactions and when we do smaller micro-level animations, the developers don't understand much. How do, how do I do it? A lot of times they say, it's not possible, it's, it can't be done, things like that. So once you create and uh, once, once you learn origami and do a small level of animation, micro interaction animation, you export it to Android or export it to iOS and give the code to the developer. Half of the work of the developer is done. So, I mean, adopt tools which will increase your productivity, increase your work faster. So, Craft is one of the best tools in the market as of now. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to talk about it much because it's going to take too much time. So, uh, figure it out to yourself later. <laughs> innovation. Innovation is a, is a, is a, is a term uh, which has been used uh, a lot when we start designing in, in the product field. But what is innovation exactly? How, do, how does it come? It comes by three things. If we find problem, let's solve it. And after that, we get a value out of it. That is innovation for me. And I'm going to show some examples which I have uh, innovated in my previous organization, current organization, okay? But uh, designing something different is not innovation. Designing something cool is not innovation. Having a value out of it is innovation. So this is the image I got inspired, you know, and this I have seen only in Bangalore, nowhere else, neither in Bombay, Delhi, but good. Problems are the core cause. How do we innovate things? Today I can wake up in the morning and say, I want to innovate thing. No, that's not possible. Go to the product owners, go to the founders and ask them, and go to the customers, talk to them. You know the root cause, what is the problem exactly? Find out the problems, as many as, pro the more problems, the more opportunity you get to solve it. And then try to solve it. As soon as you solve innovation, you get a value. Make sure, though, I mean, at least in the startup world, you know, where your startup is too early, uh, every innovation should lead to a value. It could be a monetary value, or it could be an experience value, or it could be any sort of value. So I'm going to talk about Exploit today, the company where I work. It's a hardware company, and this is a new product, uh, which can be placed on the dashboard of your car, and we can see the virtual image to be projected somewhere 2.5 meters away from the eye box, from your eye. So the reason why I built this product is the problem in today's world is distracted driving. We wanted to solve this problem. The kind of innovation what we have done is, you know, in design at least, I'll tell you, uh, we have smartphones, but are they really smartphones? You have to operate them. You have to tell what you want, then it can answer you. But our product, is a little different. The product is to tell you what happened with your car, what you have to do today. I wake up in the morning, I go to the uh, office every day, and it tells me the route which I'm going to take today, it's a congested route, but I'm going to take a different route. So without even asking Exploit, it tells me. So it is very proactive. So this is one sort of a design innovation which we have done. Second is, uh, we are still in a concept phase, I would say. Uh, we are building a uh, controller to Access, access this device uh, 